<laughs> Ellen Landemore from Yale University. Um, Mic check, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I work with Tania Itamurto uh, currently on this uh, Finnish experiment, but uh, before that I was uh, studying uh, the Icelandic experiment that we already heard, of, um, uh, heard about a little bit before, and so I want to take you through some aspect of that experiment, um, specifically the, the crowdsourced part. Um, so, uh, so in the fall of 2008, um, I Iceland went through this big economic and financial crisis, and so people took to the street and uh, led this uh, so-called kitchenware revolution uh, by waving pots and pans and making a lot of noise in front of parliament and got the parliament replaced. And one of the big topics in the public debate was we should change our constitution. It's archaic. No one, no one can understand it but experts because it's written in this old language. Uh, it's got a lot of aspects that are f colonial and, and, and that we don't agree with. So they just wanted to change entirely the text. So they went through this complicated and, and process uh, that um, uh, Eleanor uh, Seta talked about a little bit. And I just want to zoom in on, on one aspect of it, which, which came um, midstream, if you will. So there was upstream, there was a national gathering uh, of uh, about a, a thousand quasi-randomly selected people who debated about the values that they wanted embedded in the document. Um, and uh, downstream, there was supposed to be, a, th there was actually a referendum on, on the validity of that draft, as a, of, the, of the constitutional draft as a, as a, as a new co constitution. But midstream, there was this very interesting moment when the constitutional assembly, which was um, made up of 25 um, uh, regular folks selected uh, through, a, through a campaign, um, Th there was a moment of consultation of the people, of the citizenry, through a f Facebook page and a special um, uh, uh, internet page that the, the, the Constitutional Council designed. So these are the members of the Constitutional Council. The reason why I'm showing you this picture is because of the, you know, uh, it, it is a diverse group, much more so than uh, Constitutional Assemblies usually uh, are, if you compare, um, you know property white men in wigs. Uh, this is r sort of the, the standout picture we have of the Constitutional Assembly. Um, and so this is an example of the sort of interaction they had uh, with, with the public. Um, who could make direct suggestions about what should go into the, the Constitution or just comment on what was already discussed? So it, it worked uh, in 12 iterations, if you will. So the, the 25 members discussed together, and then they posted a first draft with just the headings, the chapters that they thought should be included in the Constitution. Then people filled in with suggestions. Then they went back to the drawing board, proposed a lengthier version, and then uh, after 12 iterations, they came up with a final draft. So uh, this is a picture of uh, where I try to contrast the... the, the, the ideal shape of a constitutional process according to experts. So as I said, they, they usually want a sort of wide upstream moment of popular consultation, then a wide downstream moment of validation through a referendum. But most agree that there should be a sort of secretive um, uh, uh, moment of deliberation among a few experts, because that's where you know, the, the, the quality thinking is gonna, go, is gonna go on. And in fact, what the, the Icelandic people thought is that no, the, the whole thing should be uh, widely inclusive. So um, I, there are many, many conclusions and, and, and um, um, you know, things that I could say about, about the process, but um, the fact that it didn't go through ultimately, that uh, the draft has been stalled in Parliament in spite of a two-third uh, popular support in a, in a uh, uh, full referendum, um, invites some critical reflection on the process. And I think one of the things that should have been done is more um, deliberation ahead of the process about the different steps and the public justification. Um, because it seems like this was a little bit too improvised in some, in some respects. Maybe that's the fate of any, any kind of new experiment, but uh, this clearly harmed the process. But I think, in fact, the, the most damaging thing was certainly the fact that the parliament was not on board from the beginning. They, in fact, thought they didn't have the credibility to be involved because they had been so, uh, the, 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 the representative institution had been so uh, rejected and associated with past corruption and, and, uh, and failure of government that they, they didn't want to be involved. But the result is that um, it, it really damaged the legitimacy of the whole process. So I think the lesson for us here is perhaps that direct democracy is great, but it cannot be a substitute for our representative institutions. So I, I'm not actually in favor of overhauling the whole, the, all the existing institutions we have, because some actually work um, moderately well, but they still work. Um, 
And finally, there's a question, of course, of the scalability of, um, of this Icelandic experiment. Iceland is a small country, 300,000 people. Um, how would that work on a, on a larger scale for, for bigger countries? That's it. Thank you.